Hi everyone, RJ Nestor, business and executive coach here. Uh, I wanted to share a little uh, trick that I use every week to help me focus my attention on what's important to me and what my priorities are for the week. I call it my Monday morning self-coaching. And it leverages some of Rome Research's uh, features, so I thought it might be useful for some of you Rome users to see how that works. So, you know, I have my little uh, note here coming in from my daily tasks in my task management system, uh, telling me to do the self-coaching. I also have uh, in my text expander a um, snippet uh, that allows me to just type self, and it's going to bring up and paste in all of my self-coaching stuff. Do note... These are all block references, and I'll show you why they're block references here in a moment. Uh, but uh, since they're block references, if you're creating a snippet in Text Expander, you'll actually need to use that uh, as your um, as your what's pasted over in Text Expander. So this uh, uh, little block reference code here is what would go in Text Expander for something like that. So what I'll do here is I will start typing. Um, I'll indent under each one of these. And remember, with indenting, if you don't indent, um, if I were to click here on these, uh, you know, and go back to other times of what's been on my mind over the last six or so weeks, um, that stuff wouldn't appear in these blocks. Uh, so it has to be indented underneath in order for that to be valuable to you. So what's on my mind, and I'm going to do an abbreviated version. I'll, I'll fill it out in a little bit more detail uh, later. The biggest thing that's on my mind is creating my Your Road to Rome course on Teachable. So that's, that's the biggest thing that's on my mind. I would indent further under that, uh, and I would take a few notes here about what is important about that uh, to me. Um, that's my little hack to make sure things stay indented. Um, the the other quick hack for making sure things staying indented would be focusing on that block. Um, then it wouldn't uh, it wouldn't come back when I did that. Um, but the and then I would take a second note here. The reason I have a second question that essentially asks the same thing: What else is on my mind? Is that sometimes even when you can create multiple bullets under one of those things. Uh, you will find that there's still other stuff hanging out in there and a little extra prompt can do that. It's the same sort of thing I would do as a coach with a client. Uh, you know, you ask that question that, uh, and this is a question I've borrowed from The Coaching Habit. Is that the name of the book? Yeah, The Coaching Habit by Michael Stainer, which is over here on my desk. Stainer, I think. I, I said that wrong. Um, and so that's, uh, you know, these are questions that, allow the client to do the thinking and the talking. That's what a coach does. We empower uh, you. Uh, we help you discover those things. I, my, my joke as a coach is that my pitch is, you don't need me. You have everything within you uh, that you, you need in order to accomplish the important things that you need to accomplish. You absolutely can do everything yourself. The thing is that you won't because you won't give yourself the time. You won't give yourself the permission. You won't give yourself the courage to take those things on without the accountability and the sounding board uh, that a coach provides. Uh, so these sorts of questions are geared toward digging into uh, what your needs are. And when they're directed at myself here in this self-coaching, I do the same exact thing. Even though I know what's coming, it still is valuable to not overprompt or to accidentally lead the conversation uh, because that doesn't uh, I don't want I don't want Rome leading the conversation with me any more than I want me leading the conversation with my coaching clients so that what else works that way the what's the real challenge for me here is me sort of digging back into these and figuring out okay what are what's the crux what's the things that's that are standing in my way what are the things that are going to be difficult for me what do I want this is an important clarification What's the point to all of this uh, that we're doing up here? What, what, what is it that I, what's my end game <laughs> to all of this? So I'm sort of brain dumping in those first two questions, identifying what the, what the difficulties are, and then saying, okay, before we launch into anything, what, what, is, what is the real end game? What is the thing that I want out of this? And then the last question just being, what am I going to do? What's my next step? What are the actions that I'm going to take in order to, to make this a reality? I do this every week. I have a few little smaller things that I do daily, but this is sort of my frame for the week to help me understand it. Now, that's all coaching talk. Let's look at why I do this in Rome research. 
So you saw me click over uh, once already. Uh, let's look at the self-coaching page reference first. When I go over to the page reference, what's here is um, all of those questions. So I have all these questions living on this page. And then you can see these little numbers over here. That's the number of times they've been referenced because I've been doing this for now. This is the seventh week that I've done this. So there are seven references out there. And you saw one set of them. So this self-coaching page is where these questions live. And of course, you can look right down through here and you can see these uh, previous weeks and the things that I've answered. Now, I mean, this is my personal graph, so I'm not going to open up and look at all of the stuff that I've been thinking about. Um, largely what I was writing about there today is, has been uh, dominating my thought, the how to, how to provide as much value as I possibly can uh, through the things that I'm learning in room research. Uh, but the, um, these references uh, are, are talking about what I just created on that other page. I do have some filtered out. I filtered out the references to the self-coaching rather than uh, where, you know, I, I, I talk about doing it in my weekly tasks. Sometimes it shows up on my daily tasks, depending on how I have that laid out. So this is uh, what that page looks like. And anytime I come here, I can look back at all the dates uh, that I've that I have done this and I can see what I've answered to all of these questions. Now, this is the really cool part about Rome. You don't just have to do that from the, pay, from the page, you can also do that on the block level. So because these are references, I can go to the block reference and I can look at just the answers to that question on those dates. Um, and of course, I can also filter by the date if I wanted to see specifically what I had to say last week. And you'll notice I did it on Tuesday last week. I just didn't get around to it on Monday. Um, so I have my, I can look and I can see what my answer is to those questions individually, uh, which is really cool uh, when you are just one, looking for one specific thing. And, and it's a nice illustration of the, the block level um, referencing in, in Rome and how it really behaves exactly like a page would. Uh, you go to this, this uh, go to the block and the references behave exactly the same way they would if you were on a page. So if you're just wanting to see that little bit, that part of it there, you can go in that way. So this is how I do that. I, I, I found it to be a really useful way of organizing my thoughts and sort of shaping what my week needs to be. Uh, and just because I thought it was a nice illustration of what some what Rome accomplishes, um, I thought it would be a nice thing to share with you on this Monday morning um, how I do that self-coaching. Just do remember, as I said, um, if you do happen to make it to a text expander or other related app, um, a snippet in those, remember that these references are the codes, not the text. And you'll probably have to, uh, you know, put that in manually uh, so that that way, uh, you know, it'll, when you do that, it'll pop up the correct way. But hopefully that'll be something that's helpful for you. Um, this is the sort of thing I'm going to talk about in my Your Road to Rome course, uh, which I'm releasing in three or four weeks. I'll put a link in the description here. If this is something that, uh, you know, you think would be useful for you, uh, I will um, cover those in there. The big idea of Your Road to Rome, though, is not that I'm going to tell you what to do, but that I'm going to explain how the features work, show them in sample contexts, and then as part of the course, your capstone will be to recognize and discover how to use Rome's features in your own workflow, how they can combine, how they can interweave with one another to amplify, simplify, streamline your work and your life. So that's sort of the key to the Your Road to Rome course. Uh, right now, if you go to the site that's down in the, in the description, it'll take you to where you can uh, type in your email to be reminded when the course releases. That's all that would be for. So I, I wanted you to know about that. This is the sort of thing that we'll talk about, um, you know, how these features work, how they can work in a workflow, and then you can discover for yourself as part of the course, uh, how to make it valuable for you. So hopefully this is a nice, helpful tip for you today.